Welcome back to this Global Travel Guides adventure. We're here in Paris for three days. We'll show you all the best places to see, beaches to check out. So make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. Here are our top 10 places to visit in Paris. We were blown away by the rustic and relaxing vibe here, the quaint beaches and authentic restaurants that were nestled in traditional villages. Now getting to Paros is actually quite easy. Catching a ferry from a nearby island like Mykonos will only take an hour and that red marker is where the ferry arrives. But try and stay somewhere near Naosa to the north. The beautiful fishing village is full of character and there are so many restaurants to choose from. You could get lost in the narrow walkways. Take a look. Look at this gorgeous wedding setup. It's beautiful. What do you reckon? Polikala. <laughs> Polikala means very good in Greek. I've been teaching him a few words. <laughs> Check out some of the photos John took near the water's edge in the heart of Naosa. I mean, this place is so beautiful. We found Naosa to be the perfect place to have dinner and watch the sunset. The next day, we wanted to explore the island. Kulumvithides Beach is just five minutes away and it turned out to be one of our favourite beaches. It's so interesting here as huge blocks of granite stretch across the coastline. There are sunbeds for hire and cute but narrow sandy coves. We're just there, not a bad spot. Waterfront views. Just parked up in this little part of the beach. John's just going for a little swim. Look how clear that water is. And the sun is shining. We're actually visiting here in September. The best time to visit is between June and September. Next stop on our list is just a 20 minute drive away to the much loved village of Lefkes, which used to be the capital of Paros during the Middle Ages. So if you're after a real cultural experience, you can pop past, go for a stroll through or around the main village. A striking structure here is the main church, which is made from fine white marble. So we're currently in the little village of Lefkes, which is pretty much right in the middle of the island here in Paros. We tried to find the walking tracks, but the signage was hard to follow in the narrow walkways. We were kind of getting lost. Maybe we should go back up. Okay. While we were there, there was hardly anyone around. It was really quiet and peaceful, but apparently 500 people live here. We ended up spending a couple of hours exploring. We met some locals, and if you're peckish, there are a few options. We spotted some cafes, a couple of nice bakeries, and an ice cream shop. To get around the island, we hired a car for around 20 euros a day. How much is fuel here, babe? It's about three dollars a litre. Given my heritage is Greek and I'm a great driver, I thought I'd ask John. What do you think of the Greek drivers? It's pretty good. Yep. They're a bit cray cray. Just like you. <laughs> See that over there? Let's check out fourth on the list. We made it to the top of Paros. At the peak, there's a radio tower. Up here, it is super windy. It's a bit windy. But you'll get 360 degree views over Paros. Let's go check out the view. Around 40 minutes away, back to the north of the island, is another beautiful clean beach called Monastery. If you want to indulge, rent a lounge bed and umbrella and have pricey food and drinks delivered to you. Or, here's a tip, bring your own snacks and lounge on the rocks. What rock did you want to pick? They all look pretty comfortable. Do you want the big towel? The big bum. <laughs> Yeah, well, fair enough. I have been eating a lot of stuffed olives. <laughs> Watch out for the urchin. What? Oh my god, is it? Looking out across the bay, we spotted the monastery of St. John's of Deti. So we walked over and launched the drone, of course, and took some pics. Also to 
the north of the island around 20 minutes away is the Santa Maria Beach Bar. Coming in at number six, in no particular order of course, this is the view. On the complete opposite side of the island to the south is the Faragas Beach Bar. We stopped past, we thought it was really nice, but we didn't hang around. Again, here you can be spoiled with food and drinks delivered to you. This is the price list just to hire a sunbed. Instead, we drove to the east of the island. We saved our euros and laid down our towels at Piso Lavati. We've been eating so much food. We've been making targets for ourselves. For example, we'd swim to certain objects like the boat behind me and then all the way back to the shore. Can you take the GoPro? It's too heavy. Okay. Thanks. Too heavy. <laughs> this is still recording. Do you have to go all the way around? You do. Oh. We're just trying to find somewhere to eat tonight. More importantly, a Chinese. place that sells Saganaki. Saganaki is a delicious traditional Greek fried cheese. And this beautiful spot to have dinner tonight. Gorgeous. We got the mixed grill, we've demolished it, and we are at Soiree Cafe and Restaurant. <laughs> Thanks, babe. So we just wrapped up here at Fuso Levati. John really loved this beach, mostly because of its convenience and it had a real local vibe. Why did you like this beach? <laughs> because it was salty and cool. <laughs> and the water is wet. Coming in at number nine. So we are currently driving up to St. Antonius Monastery. And the road sort of looks like this. It's quite incredible, really. Look at that. What do you mean the car's at its limit? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I keep going up. Look at that. We parked and walked to the monastery. It's one of the oldest on the island, founded in 1597. Up here, you get 360 degree views of the island. Currently, there are only a handful still active, but during the Turkish domination, there are around 35 active monasteries in Paros. Before you visit the monastery, make sure you check out the opening hours because we just arrived at midday and it doesn't open till 2. Our next stop is our hotel. Along the way though, let's get a taste of some local music. The music is playing and we're dancing. <laughs> All right, enough of that. We'll show you where we stayed for less than 100 euros a night. We're just about to check out out of our hotel, which is called Despina's Mare. I just wanted to quickly share it with you because we had a fabulous stay. We paid about 80 euro a night and that included breakfast and partial ocean views. Despina, who looks after this property, she is so beautiful. She even puts cute little slippers. If you have a car, it's the perfect spot to stay. It's our car. We're literally like the closest stop as you can get to the main town that has a car park. 28 years. That's incredible. In town, there were a few restaurants we really enjoyed eating at. In fact, I've pinpointed their exact locations in the Google Maps for you. So all the stops in this global travel guide, you can find in the link in the description below. And I hope it helps you navigate your way around. And if you ate at this boat cafe, let me know. It's right next to the rock wall where John took this sunset drone footage on our very first night in Nausa. I really wanted to come back here for a shoot, which didn't quite go to plan. Getting on a ferry can be quite chaotic. Oh, I guess you leave all the bags there. But it's the most popular and affordable way to island hop around the Cyclades. Huh. Oh, business class. <laughs> Where's economy? <laughs> we survived economy and made it to Naxos. Oh, no. It's right there. Like, it's right there. <laughs> Where we indulged. This is the famous orange pie. Witnessed magic. Is 
that not the most beautiful sunset? We made some new friends, went on some epic road trips, and dined at the most scenic restaurant of our Euro trip. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, wow. And then we trekked up Mount Zass. This is the highest point of the Cycladas. Make sure you subscribe and click that like button.